It's now time for Crime in the DMV, where we bring you the latest headlines from the week. Thanks for watching. I'm Sierra Fox. We start with an arson investigation underway after a man allegedly set a DC apartment on fire. Fox 5's Lili Zhang has the details. The neighbor we spoke with says he heard a loud noise outside today. Certainly that caught his attention. So he walks outside and he finds a man outside there. That man has since been identified as Michael Hawkins. He allegedly threw something through that window that's now boarded up. When I came downstairs and I saw him, I engaged him and I was trying to tell him, why are you doing this? And then he ran. I ran after him for a while, you know, but I couldn't really catch up with him, so I had to come back. And this is what he and other neighbors have to come back to today. An apartment home on the 2100 block of Suitland Terrace destroyed by a fire. The woman who lived inside this home says she lived here with her two kids and her brother. She told us the person allegedly responsible is her cousin. Now, she tells Fox 5 he may have a mental health issue. This information was passed on to fire officials. An arrest was announced just late this afternoon. And we spoke with the woman who suspected it was her family member all along. How do you know this was him? He was on camera and we occasionally saw him. We saw him twice outside and before the fire started, he the one that hit my brother in the head with a hammer. So he's been repeatedly attacking this home for a while, for days now. Now, we're told this man did not live at this home. However, we have learned that he is a resident of D.C. A D.C. man charged with threatening neighbors with a knife is under investigation for allegedly setting their apartment on fire as well. Fox 5's Bob Barner shows us the incident captured on video. A woman who is well known in this neighborhood for selling candy on the sidewalk here at North Capitol and M Street's Northeast says her business is on hold for now after a frightening incident caught on camera. The video is alarming and dramatic, captured on LaToya Watson's security camera this past Saturday just before 2 a.m. Miss Watson says that person is a neighbor, dousing her front door with gasoline, then setting it on fire. You can hear LaToya's dog barking in the background. She says that is what woke her up. And normally when Kobe is barking in the middle of the night, it's just because uh, someone may be passing my door. But this type of bark that he was letting out just had like some urgency behind it. The smoke alarm sounding also alerted LaToya and her 17-year-old son, Kenny, that something was wrong. When they got to the kitchen, they could see it for themselves. We noticed that it was a fire coming up under my front door. LaToya says her son threw water on the flames. And also thank God for my neighbor um, who lives next door to me, Miss Meredith. She had like a can of foam spray and she put the uh, fire out on the outside of my door. LaToya says thank goodness they installed a blink camera outside their door. The building has security cameras right here as well. And this person is still living here two floors above me. I'm at I'm in constant fear since this matter happened for the safety of myself and my son and tons of other neighbors who live in this building. Toya T's Tasty Treats is what LaToya Watson calls her candy stand, normally set up here in the unit block of M Street Northeast, something she's done for the past few months. I do it because I like to advocate for the community and that's what it's all about just bringing people together to have a good time. So it's like discounted candy yeah, and it's this, treats? It's, it gets no cheaper. When you come to my stand, nothing on the stand is over a dollar. LaToya says the man you see on the video is a neighbor who D.C. police say was arrested Monday for allegedly threatening to stab and shoot LaToya and her son Kenneth last Thursday, two days before the fire. LaToya says in attempting to set up their candy stand, Kenny accidentally rolled this dolly over the neighbor's foot. Meanwhile, this guy pulls out a knife on myself, my son, and the security guard. LaToya has gotten a temporary restraining order against Demetrius Wilbur, who she says is still living in the building. D.C. Fire and EMS tell us they're investigating this incident. I want justice for myself and my son. And I want management to give me answers why they're allowing this. I'm in fear. They should be in fear because this man is an arsonist. And the video footage gets no clearer than this. We wanted to ask the property manager here at 2M Street why the accused is still living in their building. 
but we were told no comment. A teen girl is accused of attacking and trying to rob a woman in D.C. Fox 5's Tisha Lewis spoke with the victim. Well, thankfully, a witness's cell phone captured the suspects taking off, getting away into the getaway vehicle. We did just speak with the victim. Thankfully, she is OK, but she tells us her parents told her not to go into D.C. due to the crime. In fact, she tells us she almost bought a home in the district, but instead moved to this Alexandria neighborhood because of the crime. She never thought she'd become a victim. There's like little scabs in my head. Mostly they kicked me in the head, but I did a very good job, I think, doing this. Um, but mostly they kicked me kind of in the head, so it like hurts to brush my hair. Um, I have bruises on my back um, because they mostly kicked me here, here, and all around here. Thankfully, she's alive. Meanwhile, Fox 5 obtained this video taken from a witness who saw the aftermath of the ambush. It shows the two suspects who police say are teenage girls, reportedly known to police, running off and hopping in a getaway car. We're told this was just seconds after they attacked and tried to rob Kate Rios on Sunday afternoon. Around 1230, Rio says she was less than 100 feet from her destination near D and 8th Streets in Northwest. D.C. police announcing they've arrested one of the teens involved in the attack, but refusing to discuss additional details on camera. The prosecutors in the cr criminal justice system who are assigned to the juvenile crime uh, area are, generally speaking, um, low-level prosecutors. They're, they're, they're starting out their careers. They're... Um, not really experienced, and they know that the criminal justice system in the juvenile area is not really even taken seriously. So the fact that these victims are willing to testify, that's great, but it's going gonna, it's gonna to come down to the um, efficiency of the district attorney's office. The teenage suspect arrested is 15 years old. Investigators, meanwhile, say that she's connected to several robberies across the district, including several that took place on the same day as she's accused of attacking Rios. Uh, Rios says she is recovering, and she also tells us that she will definitely testify against the teenage defendant. Now to Maryland, where cowboys are coming together to help one of their own after a horse trailer was reportedly stolen. Fox 5's Tisha Lewis explains. Investigators say the theft happened right here, and we are also told there are no surveillance cameras on this farm, aside from a camera down the street, but we're told that that camera did not capture anything. Police telling us that this theft took place sometime between Friday, July 12th, around 10 a.m. to Sunday, July 14th, around noon. We did speak with the victim, DMV Cowboy, exclusively, and he tells us that 15 years' worth of equipment is down the drain. Back of the trailer is, is designed to uh, carry the horses. The front of the trailer is designed to carry, you know, my equipment and everything. So when I say all of my equipment, just shy of my saddles, my saddles are the only thing that's at my house. Everything else, the bridles, the ropes, spurs, saddle pads, girths, chest plates, bits. I mean, everything that I've acquired in the last probably in the last 15 years is inside of this trail. That's Jason Davis, and he shared these pictures with Fox 5 in hopes that someone may recognize the trailer or have some information on its whereabouts. He tells us he's been a cowboy across the DMV for 15 years, and his, quote, whole career is inside this trailer. Davis says he has some shows coming up, and thankfully the horsing community has been supportive, but he's hoping by sharing his story his horse trailer will be returned. We reached out to Piscataway Horse Farm, and they tell Fox 5 they've never had an incident in their 47 years in business. They also confirmed they, there are no surveillance cameras on the premises. Maybe that'd be something good for a uh, suggestion box. In. Yeah. Do you have any concerns as you know, someone who has a trailer here? Uh, no, I don't. Uh, I've been here for about 20 years and uh, I haven't had any issues. We also reached out to Prince George's County Police. They do confirm that Davis's trailer was taken. As for Davis, he tells us that the trailer is insured, but the items inside the trailer, he says those items are irreplaceable. A neighborhood group is taking a stand against crime. This in Potomac, where neighbors are reporting break-ins and at least one armed robbery. Fox 5's Lily Zhang has more. 
Well, a few neighbors we have spoken with say they've lived in this area for years. They've really never had any sort of problems. But come August 1st, they'll be meeting here at the Public Library in Potomac to discuss some of their concerns when it comes to crime. Now, this whole initiative was started by a man who shared this video with Fox 5. We want you to take a good look at it. It is a bit grainy as it was taken from his home surveillance last month. As a friend was waiting for a lift ride along Persimmon Tree Road, he says three armed suspects got out and assaulted him and two others. Eventually, they got away with cash and other items. So he started Secure Potomac and heard from other neighbors who had these concerns. Now, the mission of this group is to support the addition of police forces and resources in the area and overall encourage vigilance. Until something like this happened, people take these things for granted. And it was a wake-up call for me uh, for when it happened in our neighborhood, which we consider one of the most secure neighborhoods in the, in, in the area, right? If it can happen to our neighborhood, it can happen to any neighborhood. Now, that meeting on August 1st is at 7.30 in the evening. Anybody interested is urged to contact their website on securepotomac.org. Well, that does it for this week's Crime in the DMV. Make sure you tune in for our next episode to stay ahead with Fox 5 right here on Fox Local.